My name is Comfort Uwusu Ajimami, and this is my testimony as a Christian. When I was a child, I just assumed that I was a Christian because I was brought up by a Christian mother in the Christian faith. I started with my mother in the Apostolic Church, now Pentecost Church. I remember her taking me on her back daytime and nighttime to church, even though I was about six years. I was an only child for a long time before my sister, after me. So I used to be pampered a lot, though, though I was in a Pentecostal church, my mother baptized me in a Presbyterian church in a monochrome. I started school in an Anglican primary or nursery, but when I was six years, and my right hand could stretch over my head to my left ear, I was accepted into the Presbyterian school to start class one. I enjoyed my school, except the caning. I enjoyed also the Bible teaching at the morning assembly. Going to church on Sundays was also a joy because there we were taught Bible stories of Jesus and Sunday school songs. We also were taught to recite Bible passages. As I grew older, I enjoyed Easter time and the harvest time because at Easter at the Presbyterian church, we would have Hosanna on the previous, Hosanna and then the previous Sunday, we will go to church in the morning and then after church, we would go to the bush to get our palm branches, weave them and decorate them with flowers. The church will later assemble and with brass band and waving our woven decorated palm branches, we will dance to the tune of brass band, like Oreba wa Yehuwa Dinu, Usiana, Usiana, Usiana wa Sorosoro. I also enjoyed harvest time we would be given passages from the Bible to recite. And on the harvest Saturday, we would go to the school park to help put up the apata made of the bamboo and covered with palm branches. On the Sunday, we children would put on our Sunday best with our farm produce, bread, woven in different styles, eggs, etc., etc. And the Sunday school would recite our Bible passages and sing to the joy of the congregation. I went through the rigorous training of the Presbyterian Church. That is early morning service and of a sorry. If you don't attend, you must know that some caning would be meted to you at the assembly and punishment from your color group leader because we were given marks. I went through confirmation and though I learned a lot of Presbyterian catechism my mind was most of the time on the beautiful dresses and shoes and the party our parents would throw for us. That was my mind and all of us. You could see from my narration 
that I had not understood being born again. I was going through the routine of the Presbyterian Church. I even became a choirista at a certain point and was faithful to it. From there, I continued my education at Abri Girls Secondary School, joined the scripture union at the school, but looking back, I realized I was not born again. After Abri Girls, I worked at the Foreign Affairs for some time. It was at this time that I reunited with my husband, whom I first met at a Bury Girls Secondary School when he came to visit his sister, who was my friend, and I got introduced to him. Each time we had a date, my husband would have to call my uncle, because at that time I was staying with him, to ask for permission and come home to collect me. I was, he saw me through my education, so he was taking good care of me. My uncle was posted to Rome and soon I followed. The first thing I looked for was the church. Was the church I would be attending I loved the church, but still had not understood born again. When my husband and I were married, eventually we traveled to many countries. Still, the church was my priority, including Bible study. We came back to Rome after 18 years of going round. One day, a friend called me after Bible study and took me to her house for lunch. It was after lunch that she asked me if I had taken Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I told her that I was trying he said it was not a question of trying, but accepting him. Anyway, she took me through the routine of accepting Christ that day. And in the night, I did not sleep because I thought I had taken a burden or a curse upon myself. How could I be holy like Christ? and live like him. This showed that I had still not understood born again. Though I have been in the church for many, many years, my friend explained everything again before I calmed down. After 20 years, of going around the world, we eventually returned home in 1998. Reverend Blanson was a sofa in charge of Accra Ridge Church. His wife was my classmate at Ebury Girls Secondary School, so I joined Accra Ridge Church. One day through conversation with Reverend Blanson, he asked me if I was born again. I answered yes. Then he asked me why I believe I was born again. I did not know what to say. So I said I had a Christian mother. I had been baptized as a Christian and I attend church. It was this answer that led him to explain again how Jesus came to the world to be killed on the cross to take our sins away. 
So if I believe in him and take him as my Lord and Savior, my sins will be washed away and I will become a child of God. This is the period I really understood born again. He led me through the sinner's prayer and I have walked in, the, in Jesus' footsteps by his grace up till now. Please, if you are in the church, be careful and examine yourself again. Thank you, and God bless us all. Amen. Hello, my name is Mercy Mamle Tete. I have a short testimony on how I became a member of the evangelism committee. Jesus gave us a command in Matthew 28, 19 to 20. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to, be, to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of age. This command of our Savior Jesus Christ has always had a big impact on me. Last year, during Evangelism Week, we learned that our testimony can win souls in a big way. I realized that my testimony could also encourage believers like me to obey the command that our Savior gave us before he went to heaven. When I started working as a Christian, a young Christian, I wanted to evangelize. But I knew that I could not go on crusades or mount platforms or do public preaching. These things involved a lot of working, walking about. But I, had a ch I have a challenge. One of my legs is shorter than the other. So because I couldn't do this, I decided to sponsor two young men to Maranatha Bible College. They went. Now they are bishops in their various churches. I thought that they would win souls, and the Lord knows I sponsored them. So that would be, I have obeyed the command. But I realized that wasn't the case. Have I gone to make disciples? After a while, I felt I've still not fulfilled the mandate of making disciples of all nations. So when the opportunity came for a few of us in my former workplace to get the franchise to print the daily devotional, the word for today, in Ghana. We took it up. We were a team of five. Our leader was in Okufusia Pia, who is a, a member here. And the team is called Rui Foundation. I am the most senior member. As the Lord will have it, I got a seminar in South Africa where United Christian Broadcasters Africa office was, and they were the franchise holders of the word for today. So I went and signed for us to print the word for today locally. This is a daily devotional written by the late Bob Gass and his wife, Debbie. Yeah, we distribute them locally. We bring some to this church. The church has donated towards the printing of it. And thank you for all those who have been donating towards the printing of the word for today because we are not supposed to sell it. The devotional has won souls. It's read widely. We send it hard copy and soft copy by um, WhatsApp, and many, many people read it daily 
including non-Christians. In fact, I have two Muslims on my send list. I'm a member of the Bible Study Fellowship, which encourages every member to belong to a church group. I approached one of the pastors in the church, and he recommended the evangelism committee to me. When I joined, I realized that the average age of members of the committee was about 60. Almost everybody had retired, like I was. And uh, it's not the case now, because uh, Reverend Akama Asamwa is the youth pastor, and he's brought in a lot of youth. I'm a lawyer by profession and was secretary to the board and company secretary of the institution I worked for. So when I retired, I decided I wasn't going to write minutes ever again. But then, the evangelism committee asked me to be, I was asked to be the secretary, and I agreed to do this. And by God's grace, I'm doing it, and I have not regretted agreeing to be the secretary to the evangelism con committee. This is to the glory of God. I have many, many testimonies. My testimony of how the Lord has always been with me is something else. I have been healed miraculously on many occasions. In 1983, when I was pregnant with my first child, I was operated on to remove fibroid outside the uterus, threatening me and my baby. By God's grace, we both survived. In 2014, soon after I retired, the Holy Spirit miraculously removed a growth in my colon, which was almost becoming cancerous. The doctor who performed the colonoscopy abroad exclaimed, the growth has already been removed. I wrote a testimony on this in Rich Alive in 2014. In 2016, I was encouraged to join a survey for breast cancer for those above 60. Please, this is breast cancer month. Ladies, go and have yourself checked. It was discovered that I had stage one breast cancer. This was a miracle in itself because there was no notice noticeable lump. I've had mammograms and it would have progressed to a more serious stage if I hadn't joined in that survey. By God's grace, that journey through the treatment of the, that stage one cancer has finished and I've recently been discharged. These are but a few of the many testimonies that I have from the Lord. I tell my family members that God did not put a mark, a special mark on me for nothing. There has been challenges, yes, but we have been taken through them by God's grace. I know that the command to go and make disciples may lead me to other areas of evangelism, probably to do things I thought I could not do to reach out to the unsaved. The teeming youth on our streets have been in my heart. Let's all find a way to bring them to the Lord together. You may have a physical challenge like me, or may just not be the type to go out on a platform to preach and to try and win souls, or do other public activities. But there are so many other ways we can obey the command given by our Savior. Let's use our substance, talents, time, our testimony, and other ways to win souls. And the Lord has promised to be with us 
in this endeavor to the end of age. This week, we'll be taught how to share our faith. That's the starting point. We may share our faith with individuals or with groups. May we all be restless until we find we fulfill Jesus' command of making disciples of all nations. Thank you for listening to me. May God bless you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. My name is Podyechi, a civil engineer and entrepreneur and a CEO of Saitasala Company Limited. Right from my first year in Kofoidia Sectic until I got admission to K University, I was one of the best in my school while being involved in church activities on campus. After Wasi, I had four A's and four B's, which I felt dissatisfied with. I blamed myself for being extremely involved with church activities, forgetting there were others who had eight A's who were equally very active with church activities. I told myself I will concentrate on my books solely at the university and dissociate myself with the church and its activities. I avoided Sunday church services and midweek services as much as I could to study in order to come out with good grades. After our first semester examination, I chose two papers and I thought I was not supposed to. I wrote those papers again and I had grade A and B. I continued my way of life in the second semester of not going for any of the church activities, but concentrating on my books. Fortunately for me, I had a course mate and a neighbor called Adam at Unity Hall. He was always encouraging me to go to church and join a wink, but I was stubborn until I finally gave in. He ensured I joined the Church for Evangelism that semester in the Eastern region. We, when we got to the ground and were dispersed into our various groups, I was among a group the local pastor included two guys to show us around the town. These guys were very brilliant, but due to lack of funds, they were not able to continue their education. We were saddened by the situation. I was very concerned, so we had to push for their going to tech, which was fully sponsored by the union. Today, they are all over. They are all in Canada and ministry, saving, soul, saving souls all over social media platforms, such as Facebook, WhatsApp, and YouTube. They all became very instrumental to the union. One becoming the evangelism head helped the union organize evangelism. I believe that my going for the evangelism contributed to helping these guys realize their dream of attending the university. Irrespective of your situation, don't harden your heart. Heed to the calling of evangelism because it may be through your going that the soul will be saved. I quite remember my friends and I formed an evangelism movement on campus called Kenton Corner for Christ, shortly K KFC. We organize evangelism for students who reside around the Kenton Corner and Gaza areas. One Saturday of our evangelism, one of the team visited a room of a known smoker. Initially, he did not want to open the door, but they insisted and he let them in. After the ministration of the word, he gave his life to Christ and died the next day. I believe a soul was won for Christ on that fateful day, and Evan rejoiced. Each, indeed, the food is plenty, and more workers are needed. Each day, many perish as a result of not sharing the gospel. Thank you.